So here I have this multi-talented individual uh, who's already done so much and is still so young. Um, but I want to take... <laughs> He's going to be trouble, isn't he? <laughs> I can tell. Ah, oh, dear. So I'm going to take him through in slow stages. Uh, and we've got lots of lovely clips to look at, too. Um, but we'll get to those. So you were born in Mumbai to a very prestigious family. Well, I was born in Mumbai to a family. A family? <laughs> yeah. You're sure about that? Yes. <laughs> you went to see Monty Python last night. You can tell, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah. um, the after and effects. And, your, and your, your, mo your mother and father were well-known screenwriters. Yes, absolutely. And Javed Akhtar and Hani Anarani. That's right. And um, I just wondered if you had that kind of home where there were just talented people coming in and out the door all the time. Or whether um, they locked you in the cupboard. <laughs> no, I, I was locked into the bathroom once in a while. Uh, to be disciplined, but um, yeah, no, it's true. My uh, um, a lot of people um, came over, directors, um, and as a, when you're a child, I mean, you're only interested in seeing actors. You know, you have no idea what a director looks like, or what a director does. But um, when the actors would come, my sister and me would be really shy to go and say hello, so we'd hide behind like a little wall and stare at them, mm -hmm. and then they'd call us over and say hi. But uh, yeah, it was, it was that kind of environment where we were exposed to glamour from our point of view at a very, very young age. Yeah. And when you grew up, I mean, we know eventually you came into film, but uh, was there a time when you weren't really sure what you were doing and became a bit of a problem for your parents? <laughs> yes. Um, when I finished, uh, when I got into college, I, I think I made um, a mistake. Mm. Uh, and the mistake was to just go ahead and do um, a course, which was a course in commerce, a degree in commerce. And that was something that I wasn't interested in, but all my friends were going. Mm -hmm. you know, so I just felt that um, I'll hang out with them. College is a time when you can attend only if you feel like attending. Mm -hmm. you know, so it'll be, a great, it'll be a great time. But um, I got thrown out for lack of attendance because I took that <laughs> aspect of it very seriously. Um, <laughs> and what were you doing when you went to I, I was at I was watching movies. Uh, uh -huh. I was I would uh -huh. I would get onto a, a bus from outside my house. There's a two eleven that takes you to Bandra Station. Uh -huh. So I would get onto that bus, and there's a uh, now the the theater no longer exists. It was called New Talkies, which was along the way, and I would just get off at that stop, and they'd have festivals of movies. Um, not the kind of festival that happens here, but like Jackie Chan films and, yeah, yeah. you know, Bruce Lee films and all that stuff. And I'd just go and I'd just watch all those movies and Indiana Jones and The Untouchables and all these films. Um, so I, I educated myself very well in the art of, of movie viewing at that point. You know, uh, unfortunately, accounting and economics suffered terribly. <laughs> so, well, it's clearly a great loss to accounting. Yeah, to accounting and economics, and economics that's yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, you know, yes. India would be doing even better than it is already. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we um, could have hit that eight GDP if I was around. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, eventually you did find your way into the movies. So you want to tell us, tell us a little bit about your earliest experiences, maybe some lessons that you learned very early. Um, well, the, the, the first job that I ever did working, uh, which, which really wasn't a job out of wanting to do a job, but was really from, for not wanting to get thrown out of the house. Mm -hmm. um, because my mom eventually had, she'd had enough <coughs> of me. She told me that, you know, you, you're not going to college, you're not studying, you're just sitting around and watching movies all day. Um, and there's only th that much I can take of all of this. So you better get back into college if that's not what you want to do, find yourself something to do, but you cannot sit at home mm. and, and not be doing anything. And if, I, if nothing changes, you're going to have to leave, the, leave this house and go. Mm. It's amazing the motivation <laughs> <laughs> of being, that, that motivation of, of being thrown out of the house. Serves. <laughs> Within a week, I had a job. <laughs> I was working, um, I got myself a job as an assistant director to a gentleman called Pankaj Parashar, uh -huh. who's a director. Mm -hmm. um, I was, at that time, they didn't have the concept of a proper first, second, second, second. It was just anyone who wanted to assist. You were just an apprentice on right. set. Yes. So I was like, uh, by, in today's um, understanding, I was probably the eighth AD, right. <laughs> if yeah. there's any such thing. You were not the guy shouting orders. No, not at all. You were the not guy not following orders. I was the guy following orders. I was yeah. giving clap. Yeah. Um, mm. 
and um, so yeah, I was just I was just on set. That was my first experience of being on set, mm. uh, spending a lot of time on set, and I I really enjoyed that process mm. of Did being. Did you on make set. any big mistakes? Um, well, I'd made one very big mistake. I won't take the name of of the person, of course, uh, but when I was giving clap, I uh, was standing. You know, there there was a lot of lighting going on, so at times you have to be very good at at yoga. And get your clap through many stands and and flags and things and try and reach a close up. So um, I called the shot, whatever it was, 60 by two, take three, right? And I heard the the actress go, ouch! <laughs> was it the nose? No, I it, it wasn't was the, the nose. nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and, and Pankaj was great because Pankaj went print that. <laughs> well, yeah. Hmm. So sorry. From there, I moved on to advertising. Yes. Um, I worked in a company you called Creature. Yes, a company called Script Shop, hmm. and actually, that's where really I, I learned. I think a lot of of uh, what I used uh, on Dil Chata hai. Mm-hmm. Um, I was working with Adi Pocha. He, I, I, I consider him my my guru really, mm-hmm. as far as uh, my discipline towards making film is concerned. Mm-hmm. He, he kind of just got me into shape, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, he recognized um, a potential of writing uh, in me because I had a great imagination for things. So um, he recognized that potential and he told me, you know, what you should do is just sit down every single day for an hour in front of that computer and write down what's going on, <coughs> what's going on in your mind, um, and I, I'd, I'd sit there. You know, because I thought he was, I, I really respected him. I thought he's, he, what he's telling me is for my own good. Mm-hmm. So I sat down and I would uh, just sit in front of the, the computer every single day. Um, and at times not write anything. I remember just having the film fades in, like written for three weeks and nothing after that. But I'd sit there every single day and then eventually I started writing. And uh, that's how the script of Dil Chatai came about uh-huh. from, from sitting there. Which is a neat segue for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Because I was going to say, you know, well, you're now an actor, producer, director, of course, and everything else, and singer, and goodness knows what. But um, it's, it's, as a director, I want to talk to you, first of all, with, with Dil Chata Hai, which I will pronounce badly all evening. Um, and uh, strict translation, The Heart Desires, but actually released here, uh, do yeah, your thing. Is it, yeah, it's actually, mm. it means more do your thing. If, if somebody oh, okay. asks you in slang, mm. Why did you do that? You'd say Dil Chata. It was like because I felt like. Oh, okay. Or, you know. Okay. I read the stroke. The strip script you wrote came out of trips you made to Las Vegas and New York. Do you want to elaborate on that a bit, or is that completely <laughs> is that completely uh, mistaken on my part? Um, no. The, the, uh, in '96, um, I took a very extended trip to the U.S. Mm-hmm. and that was the first time I really travelled alone, mm-hmm. um, and I met up with friends as I went along. And how, we did. Old, how old were you then? Um, I was 22. Right, okay. Uh, when I went. Now everyone knows how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, this young filmmaker. I, <laughs> I, I shouldn't have given that. Anyway, doesn't matter. But um, yeah, so, <laughs> so, so we traveled around for three months. Um, and a lot of what I experienced there, not really in terms of story mm. of the film, but just what I experienced uh, internally as, as freedom um, in terms of bonding with my friends mm-hmm. uh, a lot of that came into into mm-hmm. this film mm-hmm. um, there are i mean uh, every single character akash siddharth and samir they're the three protagonists in the film um, and all of them are a blend of people i know mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and um, so that that time that time it was that also various trips to goa road trips to goa um, that kind of came together कितनी खूबसूरत जगह है हम्म इट्स ब्यूटीफुल यू नो व्हाट हमें हर साल कम से कम एक हफ्ते के लिए गोवा आना चाहिए डेफिनेटली क्यों सेट हम्म क्या सोच रहे देख रहा हूं वो जहाज जो जरा देर बाद दिखाई नहीं देगा जानते हो हम तीनों उस जहाज की तरह हैं 
जो आज नहीं तो कल अपनी मंजिलों को ढूंढते हुए निकलेंगे और हो सकता है कि हमारी मंजिलें अलग अलग हो I was very struck by uh, that change of mood, um, mm. that really beautiful, I think, uh, change of pace, and and to see a sort of image that you don't. For me, I mean, I didn't. I'm not that, you know, au fait with a lot of Hindi cinema, but I felt that the, the shot that you've cut to mm. was very un uncharacteristic and and uh, to do with the, you know, the landscape and then showing it before we move in on the boys yeah. and before they begin to discuss it. So I was wondering what you were. You know, thinking about when you put that sequence together. Uh, well, really, I mean that. Particularly the mm. silence of the moment yeah. coming after the comedy. That's yeah. that's what I mean, really. Yeah. Well, I mean that's the thing. I mean, with with, uh, I mean, just for whatever it's worth. I mean, with friends, whatever's going on, you know, they, there's always this one time that you have, um, and there's always. A time when <clears throat> you're comfortable in each other's silences, where you don't really need to say something, mm -hmm. um, and it's about just taking in, just feeling so comfortable where you are because of who you're with. Um, so that's really what what mm -hmm. that was about, mm -hmm. you know. And what's amazing to me about about actually now, after all these years, about that that shot really is the amount of people who have travelled to this location in Goa mm -hmm. as friends and taken a picture exactly like this. Mm -hmm. You know, and and sent it to me. You know, <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, to me, to me, it just it it really. I mean, it brings a smile on my face every single time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and everyone is like ah ah dil chata hai moment, and mm -hmm. you know and stuff. And it's just how this the silence and this you don't see their faces. How this just the beauty of of three people being comfortable with each other um, just just resonates with everyone. Hey. Mm. इन मामलों में मेरी समझ जरा कमी है लेकिन तूने तो हद कर दिया <laughs> इसलिए कि उसे उम्र में बड़ी है नहीं मेरा मतलब है हाँ वो भी एक मिनट एक मिनट हम ये फजूल की बातें क्यों कर रहे हैं क्योंकि मुझे लगा कि शायद तुम दोनों इस बात को समझ सकोगे क्या समझे हम तू कह रहा है कि तुझे एक ऐसी औरत से प्यार हो गया है जो तुझसे दस पंद्रह साल बड़ी है जिसकी एक बेटी है जिसका एक पति था तू खुद हमसे कह चुका है कि शीज गॉट ड्रिंकिंग प्रॉब्लम क्या समझे हम यही कि ये सब जानते हुए भी मैं उससे प्यार करता हूं मगर सेठ जरा सोच ये प्यार नहीं पागलपन है नहीं ये प्यार ही है you know, it gets more and more clo clo closer and closer to the, the two actors, uh, Amir Khan as Akash mm. and Akshay Khan as Sid, mm. as they, you know, really begin to tear into each other a little bit. Um, and I, I just wondered, with, you know, the treat film's treatment here, just to be serious for a moment, um, between a, a younger man and an older woman and, and alcoholism, I, I, for me, I don't know, you know, is that something completely fresh and different in Hindi cinema? Is that something that uh, hadn't been tackled much before in um, this, this kind of film. Yeah, not, not in this kind of film. Not in this kind of film. Um, and I, I think what Akash's character represented was what everyone would feel, you know, given the fact that this problem is in a film, mm -hmm. um, is what they would feel. And I think um, it, was, it was, for me, important to, to change um, just the dynamics of what love, relationship, <coughs> is meant to be about, you know, mm -hmm. because it's, it's not an age-related thing mm -hmm. at all, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody has problems. So who are we to say that someone's problems are worse than our own? Um, so that's really where it, where it kind of came from, mm -hmm. because that would be the reaction, I think, of, of most people. Um, even when they read it on a script level, when we talk about it, mm -hmm. you know, um, that would be the first thing. Oh, so are they going to end up together? That curiosity to want to know, um, I think, came from a place of not being absolutely comfortable with where probably that, that relationship is heading. Mm -hmm. And was that particular scenario drawn from somebody you know? Um, I don't want to tread. No, 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 not know, really. Um, mm -hmm. No, not, not really. Mm -hmm. I mean, not from, uh, from anyone that I know, but, mm -hmm. but um, Akash's character um, is a character who I've drawn from someone. Mm 
mm-hmm. um, who went through a lot of resistance in his family right. uh, because of someone that he was in love with. Uh, right. it, it was more religion and caste based right. really than anything else. Yeah. Uh, but I could see that stress on it and I didn't want to go down that route. Right. Films have done it before, sure. before me in the past, yes. you know, where, where uh, two different religions or two different economic stratas, mm-hmm. uh, there's a conflict within the family. So mm-hmm. it, it had been done to death. Um, so to create conflict, I thought this would be something interesting mm. and, and new to, to explore. Mm-hmm. Well, that's pretty terrific. Um, I want to move on to your third film as director. There was one in between which I haven't managed to see, oh. for which I apologise. Um, that was John's. the best one! <laughs> I don't believe him. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I think this one is a good one. Um, it's Don, a thriller which features oh, India's wow. great superstar, Shah Rukh Khan. And he's a kind of unkillable super gangster. He is. You know, which I imagine Shah Rukh Khan is in real life. He is. He's an, he's, yeah, he is. I mean, he's an... He's an unkillable spirit in real yes, life, which yes. is why he's great to be this character. And it's a genre film, and it's a completely different sort of thing to what you made here. So, and also, you had some help on the screenplay from your dad. Well, uh, it's a remake of a film that was made ah, in 78. Okay. Yeah. okay. So the film was written in 78 by mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, my father and his, his writing partner at that mm-hmm. time, uh, Mr. Salim Khan. Mm-hmm. They had written this film and created this character called Don. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was fascinated by this character when I was a kid. It was played by Mr. Bachchan uh-huh. in the 78 version. Yeah. And for me, I, I'm a huge fan of Mr. Bachchan. I grew up watching his movies, idolizing him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he played, just for the first 15 minutes, um, this really um, dark character mm-hmm. called Don. Mm-hmm. And I remember being so scared of him mm-hmm. when I saw that film. Mm-hmm. And I kept wondering how could someone who I love so much scare me Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I, th- I think this should be like, why am I so scared to watch him mm-hmm. as Don? Um, and it just stayed with me forever, mm-hmm. that, that film. And um, I just felt that that film would be great to translate and to bring to a newer, younger audience who hadn't maybe, maybe seen that film then with, uh, with Shah Rukh, mm-hmm. who I think has um, the personality to pull, pull this kind of role off. Um, and also to give a new meaning to, there's a very famous dialogue in the film, which is, Don ko pakarna mushkili nahi namumkin hai, which is that, not only, it's not difficult to catch Dawn, it's impossible. Ah, That's right. the line. Right, right, right. Um, and in the, in the original Dawn, the, the Dawn says this line and then dies 15 minutes later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, <laughs> that always bothered me and I wanted to correct it. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm, I'm going to check I, my pulse yes. in 15 minutes. <laughs> So I thought I'd, I'd, I'd give that, that, uh, that, that line, which was Dawn's line, mm-hmm. the, the respect that it truly deserved. Yeah. Is hmm. Dawn. Dawn. Hai. ऐसा दिख रहा हूं बहुत खतरनाक दिख रहे हो दैट्स दैट्स अ रियली ब्रिलियंट काइंड ऑफ वन मोमेंट सीन ओह थैंक यू um which uh simplicity of it you know uh, and gets it down in just a few shots so I'm going to ask you how many takes did it take um wow i i really can't, i can't remember but uh, the thing is with sharuk um, more often than not, you don't do more than three takes. Okay. You know. Um, he gets bored. No, no, it, it, it's no, it, it's, <laughs> it's no, it's not that. The thing is, um, I, I feel, I've, and I've told him this always. I'm like, yeah. uh, your your take one and take two is always the best. Right. Um, after which he, I mean, of course, at times tries things. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. <clears throat> but somehow, in terms of being the character mm-hmm. and and not thinking too much about what he's going to do, mm-hmm. um, his take one and take two is usually the best. Mm-hmm. And had you worked with him before, or was this your first time? No, this was the first time we, we worked together. Did you feel a little 
Oh my goodness. No, I'm not really. No, 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 not really. I, I, we'd hung out a lot oh, okay. before, before the film. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was, it was very easy working with him. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I mean, we, we kind of connected on many things, you know, like uh, the books that we read, video games that we play, mm-hmm. you know, music that we like listening to. That's so yeah, it was very, very easy to work with him. Yeah. And, and uh, the thing with him is also that he, again, has grown up on the film, on the original, mm-hmm. um, and has <clears throat> told me when I met him with the script, he's like, you know, when I was a teenager, I stood in front of the mirror and I would say these dialogues of Dawn to myself and imagine myself with this gun being all macho. Um, and just that you've come and you've, you're telling me you're making this film and it's like, for me, it's a dream come true. So That's it was, great. yeah, it was a great synergy on the film. Mm-hmm. You timed it right. Got him at the right time, yes. Um, Because we're kind of moving away to some extent from your directing career at this point. You may not know this, but that's (laughs) what we're doing. (laughs) Is directing something that you still want to continue doing or is acting and producing? No, I I, I definitely will want to direct again. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, by far, in in film, I think it's my first love, Mm -hmm. uh, by far. I, I feel at this, just for whatever it's worth, at this point, um, the things that I'm getting to do um, as an actor, I think also it's, it's very age-related. Uh, relate, uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's um, a, a time when, when people think you're hungry about wanting to do a certain, certain level of work. Mm-hmm. So this is a good time in terms of experimenting with, with different roles, with different films. So I'm enjoying it tremendously. But um, I, I definitely will go back to direction. Soon? Um, I, I would hope... Um, by in the next couple of years, I would say maybe in, in a year and a half to two years, I'd, I'd think about uh, what I'm going to do. And do you next. have any time for writing at the moment? Um, uh, I had a lot of time for writing. Mm-hmm. Um, I directed actually films. The most films that I've directed have been at a gap of about two years, three years. Mm-hmm. So in that interim period, I usually write. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of material lying there that uh, will eventually make its way into into being on screen. Um, Let's see, on, on, move on now to your career as an actor. Um, now, look, I apologise to everyone because, you know, Fionn's debut was in a film called Rock On, which I don't have any clips of. So let me apologise for that. <laughs> so I'm going to ask Fan first of all, to tell us a bit about the film. It's a film that's um, about a band that, that breaks up and then comes together 10 years later. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everyone's moved on. They're doing their own thing. <clears throat> but the film really is about how um, when people connect uh, with something that they love, um, in this case, music, um, no matter where they go, no matter what they do, no matter what the problems are, they will eventually end up connecting again because their passion for something that they had created together is so strong. Um, so that's really essentially what the film is is kind of about. Um, and uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, directed by Abhishek Kapoor, um, who randomly met me in a bar one day uh, in Mumbai. You weren't and singing karaoke? No, time. nothing, nothing. <laughs> um, I, I hadn't acted in a film. I had never sung a song publicly. Mm-hmm. Um, and he came up to me and he said, uh, you know, I've heard you speaking um, in, on, in interviews or in various places. Mm-hmm. And uh, your voice is the voice I want to use for my film. Um, and do you want to act in it? So I said, I'll hear it first. So then we heard, I heard the story from him. It was an amazing story. I'm, I, I hope all of you all have seen it. Um, it was an amazing story. And I immediately said that I want to be a part of this film. So he said, but can you sing? So I said, let's meet tomorrow at the studio. And let's do a test. Um, he had no idea I played guitar. He had no idea I sang. So I landed up with my guitar and he, was, he thought I've taken this role a bit too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, okay. <laughs> so, and then we just sat and we, we jammed a bit in the studio, recorded all of it. And uh, that was that. And um, I was like, if I don't sing the songs, um, I don't think I want to do this part. Because it, it really is, a, it, singing is very, very essential to the performance mm-hmm. uh, in this movie. Um, and that's really how it came together. Um, and I, it was just a wonderful experience working on that film as a first. Brilliant. Um, I wish I'd brought my guitar along because then we could hear you play Do you play it? I do. Um, But let's hear you sing, maybe. What would you like to sing? (coughs) (coughs) Aaj meri tabihat. All all singers do that. You know, (coughs) today, 
Um, well, we can we can try and do one song at least, but y'all will have to sing along with me. Yeah, so we will do Rock On. I think Rock On is a is a fun track to do. Yeah, so. Dil kya kehta hai mera kya main bataau? Tum ye samjhoge shayad main pagal hu. Dil karta hai TV tower pe main chhod jaau. Chilla chilla ke main ye sab se keh du. Great with tempo. है ये वक्त का इशारा हर लम्हा पुकारा यू ही देखता है क्या तू जिंदगी मिलेगी ना दोबारा सॉरी आई जस्ट लॉस माय प्लेस इन द एक्साइटमेंट आई एम गोइंग टू सोर्ट ऑफ आई मीन मे बी यू यू नो Your acting took off from that point, didn't it? Yes, a it little did. bit. And maybe talk about a few of your other roles before we get to Zindagi na Milegi Dobara. I, I don't know if they're clapping for the film or for your pronunciation. <laughs> I think it's the pronunciation, don't you? <laughs> um in, in between rock on and uh, zindagi na milegi dobara i did uh, a film called lag by chance mm. which was uh, zoya who made zindagi na milegi dobara her first film her yes. debut as a director yes. uh, which was about um, the role of of chance luck opportunity in the film industry um and it was very interesting because that film had such a parallel to many things that were going on <coughs> um zoya wrote the script in 2002 and the film was eventually made in 2009 mm-hmm. and the reason she couldn't make that film for 7 years was she couldn't find someone to play the lead in that movie um and after i and we were producing it and we'd met every single actor there was um who we could meet who fit that part and everyone turned it down uh, one after the other so the film just kept getting postponed uh, zoya get got very very um depressed about it because she was very sure that that was the film she wanted to make first um and then eventually when i did rock on um and i felt really good about the acting process um i then told her that you know what i'll i'll play that part um so it's really strange because the film is also about that mm-hmm. the film is also about many people saying no to a film and then eventually i get cast uh in <laughs> in that role um so yeah it was it was it was pretty uh, crazy at that time but uh, so that was the the film immediately after rock on um then i did a film called kartik calling kartik which was a kind of a psychological thriller uh, about um, a man who gets phone calls from himself at 5 in the morning <laughs> yeah so that was next and then yeah it was it was this is your angst period we <laughs> well this was my experimental phase <laughs> and <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, and then came the right good yeah. then i can put my glasses back on <laughs> Well, your sister Zoya produced. Uh, you produced this, and she directed it. Uh, you produced it with Ritesh Sawani. That's right. Um, but before we discuss what the film is about, I want to ask you: How do you manage the dual roles of being a producer and an actor? Um, you know, in in all honesty, the the production really is the just the the pressure, the burden of production is handled by Ritesh entirely. Mm. Uh, my involvement as a producer really is um, is to. say that this is the film that we we should be making mm-hmm. um the script sitting with the director just working creatively mm-hmm. uh, with the director i don't get involved at all in uh, in budgeting a film sure. in the actual hands on production of a film organizing things um you know just speaking to various departments for i i don't get involved at all it's it's not my my thing i i want to just um i'm completely reliant on on ritesh for that i think that if it wasn't for him in excel um i a don't know if there would be an excel uh, secondly i don't think i'd be producing films because that's that's not like i said my my thing to do in terms of hands on production mm. so he we we just balance each other out uh, when it comes to production there where i handle the creative and he handles all the the executive um stuff that needs to be done Thank you. 
Tell us a little bit about you know where this film came from, from your sister, and in, in terms of your involvement in it, and uh, uh, um, you know in what ways it kind of changed things. I understand, for example, you changed the whole Indian tourist industry in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, when, when we finished, uh, when we finished with Luck by Chance, which was Oya's first film, mm -hmm. um, it was a, a very uh, like a huge ensemble cast uh, in that film. And when Zoya was done with it, I think she was very tired of working with so many actors. Mm -hmm. um, and she was like, you know, the next film I do, I just want to do with three boys in a car, you know. And then she went off and wrote it. <laughs> you know? and, and that's really how it came about. Um, and Reema and her um, had this idea of essentially, uh, it started with Abhay's character of, of someone who's engaged to be married and is having second thoughts. Mm -hmm. And how friends are so important at a time like this to, to kind of help you you know, uh, just support you in, in whatever it is you want to do. Um, so that's how it came about. And then it became this amazing, amazing road journey film. It, it's probably the most fun, you know, shoot that I've, I've done um, in, my, in my working career so far. And um, as far as the Stomatina is concerned, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's great for 15 minutes. <laughs> it really, I mean, it's amazing for 15 minutes. And, and then, then after that, you really want to just go home and have a bath. <laughs> And we shot this song for three days. <laughs> and we were in, in tomato puree for like, for eight hours every single day. And by, and it's worse post lunch. <laughs> you know, when you have to go back in there and you go in, the, the Spanish crew's having gazpacho. You know, and you're just like looking at them like, I, I can't do it. <laughs> Take it away from me. <laughs> yeah, but uh, none of us, all of us on this, on this, in the song, we could not look at a tomato for at least six to seven months <laughs> after this. It, it was impossible. But, you know, it's interesting, what you say about the sort of celebratory nature of this film, it just, I mean, it really is, uh, you just feel that, the, the amount of fun, uh, you know, coming yeah. off this film when you're watching it. Yeah, um, I, it, it is. It's, uh, <coughs> yesterday was, was exactly three years since uh, the film released. Um, and, and it's amazing, I mean, the amount of messages you get and the, uh, the number of people that the film connected with. Um, and I, I don't know, just, I mean, for me, of course, like I said, like working with Abhay and Ritik, mainly, I mean, we're all friends, and I think that translated really well, you know, into the film, because we've known each other for, for quite a while. Um, so there's, there's no actor ego involved whatsoever. You know, nobody's trying to be better than, mm -hmm. no one's competing, everyone is, is wanting the other person to look good uh, in the film, and I think that's, that's also the nature of the film as, as friends, and I think that shows in this movie. Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting that you've had these two films where there's a kind of echo of the three friends together. Yeah. And I heard you talking in the green room about friendship. It's obviously something that you, I mean, in, in the, uh, the, the film which I will, you know, the film we talked about earlier, which I will mispronounce, <laughs> um, you, you know, the, you, you talked in the green room about um, how you've never seen friendship properly represented before until you wrote that screenplay yourself and filmed it yourself? Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I, I always felt, at least with all the films that I had seen, I've not seen them all, of course, mm -hmm. but with whatever I had seen, there was a very um, over-dramatized version of what friends are like mm -hmm. with each other. Um, everything had to be either high, an amazing high, or then like an incredible low. Mm -hmm. You know, there was, there was no just being with your friend. Mm -hmm. um, and um, that always bothered me. Um, in films, so which is why when with the writing project that I was doing when I was at script shop and I started writing the script, um, so I started writing what in my head was, if if it hadn't gone in the direction of Dil Chata, it could have ended up being a very conventional love story about uh, the track Akash's track, uh, who's someone who doesn't want to really get involved um, too seriously in a relationship, but then ends up meeting someone, um, and then how he discovers true love mm -hmm. 
so to speak. Um, and while I was writing that, there were these two friends. A lot of Hindi movies have friends in the first three reels only. They then disappear. <laughs> no one knows what happens to them. They only come back just before the end credits roll and go like, hey, congrats. <laughs> Nobody has any idea what they've been doing for, for that entire duration of time. So um, that was about to happen to these two friends <laughs> in my script as well. Um, and I was just like, you know, it'd be so much nicer if I, I write about them and see what happens with them. Um, and that's how it became, Diljata, it became about friendship. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, like I was discussing in the room earlier, it's, um, it, it's, it's a very, very important part of life for me. Uh, what my friends represent to me, uh, what they've, how they've been there for me at times uh, when I really felt um, alone or just felt like I, I, I needed some kind of support. Um, and um, it's more often than not that I've, I've banked on my friends uh, for that. <laughs> sequence I had to have a dance sequence tonight there had to be one uh, I found that really great because you know there's no, no <coughs> colorful costumes it's a really cramped space yeah. uh, it's a bunch of guys not always looking their best you know <laughs> so, so tell, tell me a little bit about that, the making of that um, well I mean it started from Milka ji telling us um, that when he was in the army and in the barracks um, like there would be a night where they were allowed to kind of have a drink and, you know, just party a little bit. Mm -hmm. That would happen once in a while. Um, and that he would completely lose it, you know, and he would just dance till, I mean, he's like, I would, and he, he would sweat a lot. You know, I mean, the legend of, of Milka Singh was that when he trained, he'd uh, sweat out like a bucket of sweat. Yes, yes. You know, so he's like, I used to dance and I used to just be drenched and nobody could stop me and I would completely lose myself. Mm -hmm. And so we asked him, like, where would all this happen? And he said, in the barrack. You know, so we thought it would be a great visual to try and capture in the film as well, where someone's completely letting loose with all his his uh, so-called roommates <coughs> in uh, in the film, and uh, just represent again just the energy that this that this man had, you know, at that time. Um, and uh, over here, there's just three actors. Yeah, there's uh, um, the the one who first does the the beatbox thingy at the beginning, mm -hmm. the friend that I'm talking to. And me, we are the only three actors. Everyone else actually is an army cadet. Wow. You know, from, uh, yeah, yeah. So we got all of them and we just said, come and dance, have fun. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so yeah, it was, it, was, it was a fun experience doing it. smart <laughs> We will come and get champion. Oi! <laughs> champion Milka Singh Nazir Ho! Kya? Hmm? Chor Dalit Dar Sale? Chori Karra Hai? Oh, no, Ji. I was just looking at the pants, Ji. Pants, looking at the pants. Chor Sale? Oi! Don't say anything to me. Chor is not anything else. सुबह से ब्रेजर के पीछे पड़ा हुआ है। चोर है साला। रिपोर्ट लिखो इसकी। मेरे पास भी ब्रेजर है ये। फेंक दो इसको। चोर है साला। चोर है साला। When I met Rakesh to start with, who's the director of the film, he was so 
motivated by Milka's story. Milka is a huge hero for him. Um, Rakesh is a sportsman. He used to swim uh, nationally. Um, and uh, his biggest hero was Milka Singh because when he was training, he was told stories of Milka Singh and how Milka Singh used to train. So uh, when I met him, I could see that he is um, in love with this film and he's in love with the story. Um, and he really wants to share this love with people. Um, and that really did motivate me. Um, and then when I met Milka, of course, and he told me his, his what everything that went on in his life, I met his family. They were so welcoming, they were so warm. Um, and it felt like you have to do whatever it takes, you know, so that when they watch the movie, when Rakesh sees me on set, that they don't feel that they've made a bad decision, you know, by casting me in the film. Um, and that, that really kept me going. Um, and um, I, I don't regret one single day of anything that I did on that film. I, I didn't miss not eating something. You know, um, I look forward to going and shooting regardless of what was needed to be done on that day. Um, it, it, there was something that just carried us through. And I think that that stemmed from, from Milka Ji's um, amazing life and from Rakesh's amazing commitment to, to the film. I think that just that gave me a lot of strength.